this video is about a BXP88 and an issue I had with um, when I was testing it, uh, stuff not working correctly. And so I've got here a couple examples of, and take in mind the wire colors you see here are what's on my layout. I have red for uh, the individual sections. Red is actually the inner uh, track. And then I have black, black you can see there. And that is the outer track, the common rail. And these nine, I don't believe would give anybody really any trouble to hook up because you've actually been going through on your table and putting a bunch of time into putting those in the right spot. So putting all those up into here, pretty straightforward. And these are all the input, are the items that go to the track. Over here are the ones that go to your booster. And what got me is the fact, or the uh, first, uh, the green is basically pretty straightforward. It goes from ground to other grounds. But the other two, go from rail A and rail B. And I actually put them in, I can't see my uh, boot, uh, command station. And what I ha can see is it's basically two red wires coming out of there because it basically, I uh, built it 20 years ago and it's the power that goes through a power supply, a Radio Shack uh, project box. And so uh, it comes out of it as a re uh, red and a black wire out of the project box, but I don't know how it really goes through. So I didn't know which one was A and B. So I took my best guess and odds being 50-50, I got it wrong. So what should I have done? Well, knowing the fact that my um, one side, the inner rail is all red, and I look here and I see that these are all the blues, I should have known that I should put the other red right here because that red goes out and then connects to those two or through the inside of the device and connects to the nine there and then uh, the four there and the four there. And then the red is on mine black. And there's black also, what it should be. And it goes and connects through to there to my common track. So the point is when I was looking at this, I really wasn't thinking of what my layout was as far as I hooked up the colors and stuff because when I hooked up the table originally, it was not set up for this device or this device. So what I did is I had to switch these two around. So when I first started, I tried trying to put plug the plug in. These were the other way around. And what would happen is relays on my PM42 that are connected up underneath my table here would start clicking off. So it, I couldn't really turn the table on because, or I couldn't turn power on to the system because uh, they kept making noise. So I tried a different power supply. Don't ask me the difference here, but that one's green. I got both of these from Digitrex. And this, got this a long time ago, and that one's red. This one I was able to plug in, and it worked. It did not make the relays keep switching on and off. But I noticed another thing as I was uh, going through running the trains, is whenever I turned my power off to my track, the orange lights, the orange lights that you see here for track status in here, when I turned the power off to the system, they turn, that one turned green, that one turned red. Well, that's when I started looking at the drawing and realized I had done these backwards. I should have thought of, hey, these blues are red on my layout, and these reds are black. Should have switched them around. So when I switched them around, I was then able to plug in both power, either power supply, and when I turn and turned the power on, relays didn't work, and the colors for those guys stayed the same. But then I started looking at some stuff, and I was worried about, okay, I'm sitting here testing everything in this 
uh, four wires at a time in here on this track. But what is going to make it – how do I know that I've actually got my red coming here and red coming to that side and black on this side and black on that side? Basically, how do I know I didn't cross stuff? So what I did is I went in and I take another piece of the Kato track. I put a double gap in here. I ohmed it out. That's the white wire on this side. There's the blue one on that side. And come get that back in. And white goes over to the red side and blue goes to the black side. So again, as I said here, red is here. I think red is here now. It's the white connected to the red. So now I can test to see if the train will drive across there without any problems. So one second. So turn track power is already on. Select my engine. So train goes in, goes around just fine. So now I was able to test that I actually – second, let me get that off there – that I actually have all the wires in here correctly. And when I put this onto the table I have and I put them together, I shouldn't have a problem with them, uh, the wires uh, – the stu uh, stuff – the A and B rails crossing. Now. I went in and started looking at some of these draw, uh, drawings for the different stuff. And I started noticing that here, so here is your common rail. It's red. It goes up and it connects to RAX. And then it goes through there to RA, goes to the command station. And it goes to RA. So here's the common or so I have in my train ta uh, table, this table over here, uh, BDL168. And here is the common rail. And again, just like over here, it is red. And here's the red wire. And it goes up to the B. Which means, I'm sure each of these work perfectly by themselves, but it means that they cross. And I went a little farther and I have something I'm really hoping to text next because I think it looks pretty sharp looking at the data sheets, is the PM74. And if you look at it, and by the way, remember the red was A down here is the common rail. If I go here, and I'm not going by the orientation of the picture, I'm going by the fact that here, on this side, they have connected these three, yes, these three block, or three, these two blocks, excuse me, to the same rail. So that's the common rail that they kind of show in the drawing. And my point isn't the fact that it won't work. My point is you need to adjust this to the other pieces you have might have on your table, if you understand the concept. So, again, it's following your red rail or whatever color tracks you have, uh, wires you have to do it. So, what did occur to me that would be kind of neat is what happens if I was to take this and switch it or rotate it. So now I have basically crossed it. So. My red wire is here on this side, and now my red wire is on that side. Red wire, red wire, black wire, black wire. So if I start going – now I'm going slow on the first time because – so if you were to be putting a pieces together and you see that kind of – Response, you can hear my relays clicking. Let me pull myself out of there. Now, 
I also found that if you increase your speed, you can have momentum just kind of throw you across it. So point, what is I'm trying to show is the fact that when you're putting your different pieces together, all these are B BXP 88. There is a BDL 168 and your PM 74, you really need to think about how those rails are going to uh, react or work with each other. So in here, there's the problem that I had and when going through the data sheets, I started seeing that to make the comment, well, I'll just follow the data sheet and I'll be okay, didn't actually lead you down the right path. So there was the first part and that was, again, I had done it backwards didn't follow the picture here, had nothing really to do with the other stuff. Um, my thing was I didn't follow this piece. And I believe if I had um, not known, if I had never put the power in, I would have never known it. I would have had all these uh, connections and thought I had tested everything out. But it, without the power in, I would have never known these were backwards with my other device. And I would have put it in the other table, would have hooked it all up, and then when I connected the two tables together, I would have got the disconnect when I tried to go across it. So, point. If you're using, like, these three, once I probably figure up the answer for one of them, they're all the same. But this guy, PM74, might be a little different. And point, need to test it. Now for me, this is actually already installed. This is on the table, uh, in my first table over here. And here's a table, it's basically 16 channels. It's actually, yeah, just for this conversation, it's 16 of them. And uh, that's the device I have in here. And my other tables, I am looking to put different devices, newer on. I might update this table, but I'm not there yet. So, there was rail A and B. And the other thing I wanted to say was, I'm gonna take this over to my table. And as far as using this device, so this guy here has eight sections and they all share a common return. And so looking at my table, you can kind of see that I have already routed everything up to these terminal blocks and I am ready now to install those uh, BT, what is it? BXP 88. I got three of them. There's one's going to go here, 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 and there is the black wires that the first one goes with one of them, that goes with another group, and that goes with another group. And how you use these is I got eight common sections. So if you look at here, they're on. This is this table I'm looking at right now that's underneath me. And bottom line is here's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight. <clears throat> and there's a double gap and a double gap, which means I have kind of designed this section to efficiently use that guy. Those were the double gaps there. And here are double gaps here on this side. And if you were to count through here, you'd see that there's seven tracks here. So here I've got one that I'm just going to leave blank. And then here you're going to see, and I'm going to reroute this maybe, but point, what I wish I had done is switches coming in as one, two, three, four, and then switches coming in as one, two, three, four blocks. And then I'm under the table, I will wire those together so that they can efficiently use uh, BXP88. And then here's another example of, and what I was trying to show is how you have to design your table to efficiently use the, uh, the product. And so here, if you look in here, counting up, there's following along there, no train crosses that gap. So 
Here is one, two, three, four, five, six uh, lines. And then seven, eight. And eight is the magic number again. And that one works pretty smoothly. And then here, if you look on, if you kind of just, where my finger's going, no train goes, or no line goes across there. There are actually nine sections up here. And the problem I have is there's nine, not eight. So what I am thinking I will might do is I can either put a double gap in there and change it, or, or change it so that it's eight, or I could go in and this siding here, and this siding here I just wire together under the table, and now I got eight. So that's talking about kind of how I've planned to efficiently use the BXP88, one of them here, one of them here, and potentially three of them here. And then maybe I was going to look at uh, the PM74 to fill in the other spots.